The PGM-17A Thor was the first operational ballistic missile of the United States Air Force. The Thor and later Delta families of space launch vehicles used boosters derived from the initial Thor missile. Once the first generation of ICBMs based in the U.S. became operational, Thor missiles were quickly retired. A small number of Thors with thrust augmented Delta boosters and W-49 Mod 6 warheads remained operational in the anti-satellite missile role as Program 437 until April 1975. Thor was test launched from LC-17 at Cape Canaveral Missile Annex. Missile 101, the first flight-ready Thor, arrived at Cape Canaveral in October 1956. The booster performed normally, but the flight was terminated at 35 seconds after an erroneous console readout caused the range safety officer to believe that the missile was headed inland instead of out to sea. Missile 104, launched the 22nd of August from the newly opened LC-17A, broke up at T plus 92 seconds due to a drop in signal strength from the programmer, causing the engine to gimbal hard right. Missile 107 fell back onto LC-17A and exploded at launch when a gas generator valve failed to open. Thor 114 was destroyed by range safety 150 seconds into launch when the guidance system lost power and Thor 120's engine shut down slightly under two minutes after liftoff. On the 22nd of April, Missile 117, carrying the first able upper stage, lost thrust and broke up at T plus 146 seconds due to a turbopump failure. The Jupiter, Thor, and Atlas missiles all used a variant of the Rocketdyne LR-79 engine and all three suffered launch failures due to a marginal turbopump design. In contrast, the USAF's General Schriever rejected the idea of sending Thor and Atlas missiles back to the factory so as to not delay the testing program. A month later, Atlas 6B also suffered a turbopump failure and the Air Force gave in and agreed to replace the turbopumps in all of their missiles, after which there were no more launch failures due to a turbopump problem. The operational variant of the Thor, the DM-18A, began testing in the autumn of 1958, but Missile 138 went out of control shortly after liftoff and had to be destroyed. Thor was declared operational and testing now began at Vandenberg Air Force Base on the west coast when Missile 151 flew successfully on 16 December. On 30 December, a near-repeat performance of the 5 November failure happened when Missile 149 lost control and was destroyed 40 seconds into launch. After a run of successful launches during the first half of 1959, Missile 191, the first to be launched by a Royal Air Force crew, suffered another control malfunction while being launched from VAFB. This time, the missile's pitch and roll program failed to activate and it continued flying straight up. Another 23 Thor missile tests were carried out during 1959, with only one failure, when Missile 185 on 16 December, the second RAF launch, broke up due to a control malfunction. The Jupiter missile, a joint effort of Chrysler and the Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama, was originally designed to attack high-value targets like airfields, train-switching yards and command and control sites with extremely high accuracy. During development, the U.S. Navy became involved in the Jupiter program, with the objective of arming submarines with a ballistic missile. Accidents such as the explosion of Thor 103 were avoided, and the turbopump issues that plagued early Rocketdyne engines were also resolved in Jupiter much earlier than the Air Force's missiles. The Jupiter program was more successful due to far better testing and preparation, with each missile given a full-duration static firing in Huntsville prior to delivery. Missile 107 had not been given a PFRF at all and its launch ended in a pad explosion. A static firing stand for Thor tests was only opened in May 1958, at which point the missile's launch record stood at four successes and nine failures, including four launch pad explosions. Thanks to the thorough testing done at Huntsville, Jupiter missiles mostly all arrived at CCAS in flight-ready condition while Thor's typically required extensive repairs or modification before launch. Deployment of the IRBM fleet to Europe proved more difficult than expected, as no NATO members other than the UK accepted the offer to have Thor missiles stationed on their soil. All 60 of the Thor missiles deployed in the UK were based at above-ground launch sites. The missiles were stored horizontally on transporter erector trailers and covered by a retractable missile shelter. To fire the weapon, the crew used an electric motor to roll back the missile shelter, essentially a long shed mounted on steel rails, then used a powerful hydraulic launcher erector to lift the missile to an upright position for launch. The entire launch sequence, from starting to roll back the missile shelter through to ignition of the rocket engine and liftoff, took approximately 15 minutes. Main engine burn time was almost 2.5 minutes, boosting the missile to a speed of 14,400 feet per second. 
10 minutes into its flight the missile reached an altitude of 280 miles, close to the apogee of its elliptical flight path. By 1959, with Atlas well on its way to operational status, Thor and Jupiter became obsolete, although both remained in service as missiles until 1963. In retrospect, the IRBM program was a poorly conceived idea as it depended on the cooperation of NATO allies, most of whom were not willing to have nuclear missiles on their soil, and was also surpassed by the ICBM program, yet continued anyway for political reasons and a desire to keep the workforce at their respective assembly plants employed. Thor's lasting legacy was not as a missile, but its use as the basis for the Thor Delta Space Launcher family into the 21st century. The 8th of July 1962, Thor Missile 195 launched a MK4 re-entry vehicle containing a W49 thermonuclear warhead to an altitude of 250 miles. Despite being retired from deployment as a missile a few years after deployment, the Thor rocket found widespread use as a space launch vehicle. The last remaining direct descendant of the Thor, the Delta II, was retired in 2018, and the Delta IV is based on mostly new technology, unlike the Delta II. United States United States Air Force 705th Strategic Missile Wing United Kingdom Royal Air Force RAF Bomber Command. The Thor IRBM, the Quan Missile Crisis and the subsequent rundown of the Thor Force.